This is Dr. Chabra. I'm the Chief of Musculoskeletal Radiology at UT Southwestern. And today this session is focused on advanced imaging of hip. We are a big hip preservation program with uh, lots of cases done on a daily basis. And uh, this kind of lecture is important not, not only for us locally, but also nationally and internationally for all folks who are interested in advanced processing of hips. Uh, whether it's 3D CT processing or 3D MR processing, but today we'll be focusing on 3D CT processing. So um, I'll load a case there and I'll show you how to do that imaging, both in volume rendered setting as well as how to make reconstructions for various angles uh, and measurements our surgeons desire. So this is a scan I've loaded. It's an anonymized scan. And once we load the scan, it shows up in axials, coronals, and sagittal planes. And this is a volume rendered image. And the first image which surgeon likes to see is this kind of volume rendered image, which shows the bones in 3D, uh, the pelvic bones and the femora. And um, you want to see these bones both in the side to side rotation as well as up and down rotation. And the way to do that, we can go to the batch processing, which is this one, which you can see in a number of independent software tools. This one happens to be TerraRecon, which I don't have any conflict of interest with. So here, if you go to the batch processing, so let's start with up and down, and you could preview it or just go to output. So here, during preview, it shows you the rotation. You want to keep all the bones within these two blue lines so nothing gets cut off. So we can actually minimize it a little bit, like that and then center it a little better, which is this. And at this point, we can just do the output because we know it's coming out good. So this is up and down rotation and you can always, this is the output panel. You can always adjust it to 12, 24 or 36 images. Our surgeons like 24 images. So now the next step would be to go right to left or left to right. And this is your personal preference, how you want to do it. And again, we go to output. So this basically shows the bones in side to side rotation as well. So then we can go to our output panel, control A, basically select all these images, and then we can uh, delete them. We can delete the current image or whatever we want, but basically we'll send these images to one of our pack stations, which is either the university or the Parkland site. So once this is sent, now we want to do individual hips and individual segmentations. So we'll delete these images, so this goes as a separate set. So at that point in time, we'll have to segment these bones, and there are multiple ways of doing it in Terra Recon. You can use the free region of interest and select the individual bones, or you can do a region grow and select the individual bone, um, and then you can batch them in a movie. So let's start with free region of interest, which is more complicated way. This way works when the bones are very close to each other. For example, in an older patient with osteoarthrosis. So in such cases, the bones are very close. So I'm changing it to bone window. I can magnify that area so I can focus on the right hip. So this is the scroll button. I can scroll through it. And now I'll use the shift key. I'm at free ROI and my left click and basically draw a circle around that. So this is not completely manual, it is sort of semi-automatic. So we can go to a larger area of the bone like this, where it starts to become a little oblong rather than rounded, we can get that bone. And then we can go to where it's a smaller circle, because we are trying to segment out femur. Now here, this is the first circle which shows up, so I have to get that. And as I scroll, you can see it automatically interpolates and gets that femur in. So here it's coming out. You can again use your shift button and the left button and then redraw it. And then you can see it's coming out here. You can redraw there. Now you can see it's coming out here. You can redraw around that and then a little bit around that. Basically, you need some hand-eye coordination which usually lags when we are 40 and above. But we try to do the best we can. So here you can see, you can draw here. Take this out a little bit. 
and you can see it's pretty much coming inside that circle. So that takes a little bit of the time, but it'll give you the finest reconstruction without any overlap or mixture of other bones when you're just segmenting the femur. Do more of that. And then here you can see it's coming out. You can segment that. And I'll show you an easier way after that. But that easier way works in this kind of young patient where you have space between the two bones. So here it's coming out. You can select that. So now you can see the whole bone is inside. So it interpolated the rest of the scans. So as I go all the way down. So now a critical button here is to press exclude. So you are excluding this femur first. That's the way tear recon works. And then you reverse it. And once you reverse it, you will see that you have the femur which you wanted to outline. Now this is the table which is seen in the background. You can get rid of this table and set these presets. So here I see, I click on the table removal. It takes that table off. Now this is a bone which is individual femur segmented out. And now you can not only see the femur, you can also see this little bump on there. So this femur is rotated in the same way as we did the whole pelvis. So you go to the batch and go to output and it's gonna rotate from side to side. So the surgeon can see from side to side and also show it to the patient where they're gonna shave off the bump and which area they have to shave off. And then we can go up and down so let's do from down to up. So here's one way of doing it. So now we have all these images of the femur. So again, we want to send it as a separate set to packs. So we'll basically again do control A, select, send it, and then send it to our packs. So now in order to get the acetabulum on that side, all you have to do is, you don't have to segment again, you can just do you go back to free ROI and you can just do reverse. So now you can see, you can see the acetabulum. Again, you have a CT table in the background. Click on that CT table, it takes it away. And then you bring it in the center. Now you can show this whole pelvis with the acetabulum and as the surgeons look at the hips, they usually look at from the side. So that way you can see the anterior wall, the posterior wall, the anterior column, the posterior column, the roof, the quadrilateral plate all of those structures. So you can show it like that, or if you're showing individual, which we do in our practice, because I get individual hips. So now you can use a free ROI again, and basically cut through this area, because we don't need all of this. And you can basically cut it out. And then any pieces of bones you're left, you can cut them off. Now, sometimes you'll get these kind of edgy artifacts. You can always do a smooth surface by right click. And here you can see it's a smooth surface now. So now we have the acetabulum. Again, we'll show it from the side, right like that. And then at that point, we go to batch again. And then we can start with our right to left turn. And then we can do up and down. And you have your images. So now you can see in your output, you have the femur. The next you have the acetabulum. And you control A, select all, and send it to your packs. So this is the individual segmentation. Now, um, you can always go back to where you started. So for that, um, you can go back to your region of interest and you can do reverse. So this gives you the remaining pelvis and then you can do reset, undo and undo and you can go back to different things you want to see. Okay, so you can always do that. And one will repeat the same process for the left side if he was doing left side, he or she was doing the left side as well. So that way you can show them individual segmentations of both hips. Okay, so now I'm going to show you an easier way to segment these bones uh, individually. And that's kind of using the region grow tool. So instead of free ROI, we can go to region grow, which is this one. 
and then uh, you can name it whatever you want in this case we name it femur and then we can give it a color so maybe red color here and then all I have to do is press the shift button and the left click and you can see it grows up pretty quickly and I can roll back the wheel and bring it back or I can roll back uh, roll the wheel the other way and get this femur and now you can turn it and you can see that only the femur is colored a little bit of the establum shows up uh, which is more of an overlap so you can roll back a little bit the other way is you can also do minus one or minus two or plus one or plus two and you can reduce the, the, the blue color or the gray color uh, you get on the femur so once we have that we're going to do the same action we can click on exclude so that's going to exclude the femur we're going to reverse it and you can see you got the femur there so this is a much easier step um, than what we did before and it works if you have a good space between the femur and the acetabulum so again we have the table in the background we're going to do the table removal that goes away and then uh, we can do minus one again to get rid of any of the extraneous stuff on top of the femur and we can magnify it bring it in the center magnify it and now we have the femur and we can do the same thing go to batch output and it turns and go to viewer again go right to left output and that's done and you can go back to the viewer and we can go to free ROI, reverse it, and now you have the acetabulum. So again, we take the table off, bring this in the center, and then use the free ROI, cut out any of the extraneous stuff you see, or if you want to cut out anywhere here, you can cut it out. And finally, what you have is basically uh, the establum. It seems like there is a little more stuff there. We'll cut that out. And now you have your establum there. So again, you can do the rotation and take pictures. So that concludes our section on 3D segmentation. Now there are some research tools out there or research work we have done with segmenting the bump. That can also be done. Basically, uh, one can go to the femur by reversing it find that femur and then find that area of bump do a region grow on the bump and in such a case you can actually get the volume of the bump or volume of the head and then if you are into the, that research you can correlate with how much of the bump volume um, correlates with the extent of the labral tears in different patients is there any correlation that's what we found in our research that with increasing bump volume these patients have um, larger labral tears. They, we didn't find a good correlation with cartilage damage, but we had a smaller series, so we'll have to check in future. But you can do the same things here. You can use the region, and at this point, you use the shift button. You basically can decrease it, increase it by rolling your roller. And you can see that it highlights that, that area of the bump, which is this area. It highlights that very nicely because this is a different bone. It's a depositional bone which happens from uh, repeated physial injuries in most cases uh, as it happened in young adults or repeated stresses. So this is a different kind of depositional bone than the normal femoral cortical bone. So one can outline that. And then you can always um, do an Alt V, which is give you a volume. So it gives you, in this case, giving the volume of the femur, but you can get the volume of the bump as well, just like that, and then you can correlate. So this concludes our section on how to do the whole pelvis segmentation and how to do the femoral segmentations. Um, and then we'll look at how to do different measurements and um, how to look at before those measurements from top of the pelvis, from top down view, whether the femur is under covered or over covered. So we will basically um, uh, get to our next part where we'll describe different measurements like alpha angles and center edge angles and um, uh, How to do these different measurements and put in your structure report. Thank you so much for watching